AITA for giving everything to my oldest so that my future wife and her kids won't get anything? My late wife passed away three years ago. She did not have a will and our daughter, F-18, and I both inherited half of everything. I always knew that my wife planned to leave everything to our daughter, but she died young and suddenly and didn't get a chance to write a will. I met my fiancé 1.5 years ago, and we got engaged two months ago. Before getting engaged, I gave everything that I inherited from my late wife to my daughter because I feel like this is her right. My late wife would have never wanted another woman and kids to inherit what she worked for. Well, my fiancé recently found out and is very mad at me. She thinks I'm an asshole and whatever I had should belong to all the kids. She has a 17-years-old daughter and we are planning to have a kid together. I could have understood if her complaint was that you took a major financial decision without informing her, but you are NTA for honoring your late wife's will that she tragically didn't have enough of a warning to write down. Exactly. It's not like Opie cashed in his 401k and gifted it to his daughter. He gave his daughter her mother's estate. Any woman who wants to take a dead mother's assets for her own children when the deceased had her own child isn't worth a damn. Opie should be careful about joining his own assets with this gold digger. Not to mention that the fiancé likely feels animosity towards Opie's child now. Not a very pleasant situation, but Opie is NTA at all for his actions. And they're not even married yet. If he does marry her, you best believe she's going to bring this up and have a fit every damn time he tries to do something for his daughter. Or badger the daughter to try and give some to her kids. This is a mess, and there is no good possible outcome. Yep, he needs to dodge this bullet while he still can. I can't believe she is upset about money that isn't hers and that came from his late wife. That is insanely disrespectful and gross behavior on her part. Opie do not have a child with this woman, right? His new girlfriend wants to steal his daughter's inheritance for her own kid. She's a walking red flag. Hopefully Opie sees that and exits. There's a good partner out there waiting to meet him. He can't find her if he's stuck with a succubus. Any woman who wants to take a dead mother's assets for her own children when the deceased had her own child isn't worth a damn. Very, very well put. Like who the fuck goes like, oh, a dead mother left her inheritance for her only child. Since I'm now involved with the widower dad, that money should go to him why child. I had with a different man, instead. Exactly. In what world should Opie's grown stepchild inherit his late wife's money? In his delusional fiancé's world. He's known her for a year and a half, and she expects him to give her daughter his late wife's money. F that. In the world of, if we are married then our families become one and my children are your children too, but your child is just yours. Lots of stepmoms are complete sociopaths when it comes to dealing with their new spouse's prior children. They only see the marriage in terms of how it benefits them and their biological children. That is one big reason that I never got remarried. I have three adult children and plan to leave everything to them. I'm not rich but, with my home equity, I have $1M to leave them. Even if I made a will or a trust, you never know what could happen. I could be incapacitated, taken advantage of, all my money stolen from accounts, tricked into signing away my house, etc. I guess we see it all the time around here where the new spouse gets everything and gives nothing to the person's children. I won't let that happen to my estate or to my children. Yeah, you can use videos of people saying what they'd want as evidence in probate, and this is the same except there's no evidence. There's also no evidence needed though because he has already obtained the right to that inheritance, and it's his to do with as he pleases. It's both morally and legally correct, which is the best sort of correct. Red flag, Ted flag, red flag. Someone stop this man from being an idiot. All the offense because if she's like this now imagine the entitlement, even worse still bio daughter will be neglected and abused because she's not new wife's blood. Ruin all away. NTA. That's just nuts. Why would she expect anything from your first wife? Of course, everything should go to your daughter. You need to rethink this relationship. This op. I don't think this woman is the right one for you. She ain't the right one for anyone. She a gold digger, and you don't see her getting with no broke folk. Especially after learning about the planned child between two people with nearly grown children. I have to wonder if she had the idea, and the whole thing stinks of, well now you have three children and it should be split evenly between them. The deceased had one child, nearly grown. The mother's assets should go to her child. 
and the fiancé's daughter's nearly grown, and Opie has hardly been in her life. No matter what, inheritance should go to Opie's daughter, but it seems especially entitled to think a third should go to a nearly adult future stepdaughter. Story 2. My husband asked if I would be willing to care for his mother I said no. Does this make me the asshole? My husband of 16 years asked me if I would be willing to care for his mother. I told him no. My husband asked why not I told him the truth. We never got along. She has always been passive-aggressive towards me. I have been told that it is a thing many Hispanic mothers do when no one is good enough for their child. We are civil towards one another that is the best we can do. My husband even dared to bring up the fact that he supported me when I took care of my dad who had cancer. I told him the situations were different because he offered I did not ask. I also had other family members that were helping. He is an only child and has no one else so everything will mostly fall on my shoulders since he does work long hours we are talking sometimes 12 to 18 hour days. Last week alone he worked 84 hours. I told him I understand it may seem unfair but the situations are different. I had support on my head when it came to caring for my dad. I will have nearly zero support. Yes, he has offered to pay extra support but that will just eat into our budget. We are currently trying to save for a house and I am currently not working as I am in school trying to finish up my degree. Took time off from teaching to care for my dad. After he passed I did not want to go back to teaching. So ATM I am my third year into my engineering degree. I do not wish to put that on hold either taking care of his mother. After I explained all of this my husband just left and has not returned any of my phone calls. I spoke with my mom, but she was not far from helpful. She found it silly I even went to school in the first place. Got me thinking am I the asshole for not wanting to put my own goals and life on hold again for a sick parent? NTA. You are the caregiver in both scenarios. That is a heavy responsibility with lots of physical and emotional stress in the best of situations. Dad relationship was most likely a hell of a lot nicer than the passive-aggressive hate from MIL. Suggest to husband that you can finish your degree and get a better paying job that can ease burdens, time, and money so husband can be a caregiver to his mom. He can cook, clean, change bedsheets, chauffeur, etc. Something makes me think he won't be down with that. Exactly. My husband even dared to bring up the fact that he supported me when I took care of my dad. You took care of your parent. He can take care of his. NTA no one should be forced to be a caregiver. Your husband could cut back on his work and take care of her himself or organize something else for her care. You shouldn't have to put your studies and life on hold. They should have had a plan for this in place a long time ago. Also, he helped out with your dad. He was not the principal caregiver. I'm sure that you would help out with his mom too, but you're refusing to be the principal caregiver. Exactly this, OP. Your husband is attempting to compare apples to oranges. What he proposes is far removed from your father's situation at the time. Story 3. NTA. Emile doesn't even like you. LOL. AITA for forcing my family to babysit, so I won't have to? I'm 19F, living at home, working a part-time job, doing some freelance stuff, and taking some online courses all in preparation for attending college next year. My sister, 25F, had her first child eight months ago. The father isn't involved and only pays CS. My mom is excited to have her first grandchild and is constantly offering to look after the baby so my sister can feel at ease working full-time and afterwards will have some time for herself to relax. The thing is, about 70% of the time I'll be the one looking after the baby and while I admit that I enjoy it and like spending time with him, I can't help but feel mad because they don't have any consideration for my time. Mom would drop the baby while I'm in the middle of my lessons because you can always watch the recordings later or just ask someone to tell you what it was about. Or when I'm working in my freelance stuff because looking after the baby doesn't really require much when I complain about getting delayed in my projects. My breaking point happened last week when my mother and sister left the baby with me for a whole day because I mistakenly told them I didn't have to work and would be staying at home to catch up with some pending stuff and study. I told them both irresponsible and they called me a spoiled brat. That night, my grandma and other members of the extended family were calling and sending me messages about the importance of helping family and to understand that my sister doesn't have it easy being a single mom. I got mad and sent a message to the family group chat saying that they were right. Helping family is important and we all should be supportive of my sister. I then proceeded to write a schedule in which all of us could take care of the baby. 
Because one aunt goes to visit grandma on Mondays and Wednesdays mornings they could babysit those days. Eldest cousin and her siblings AR at their home Fridays afternoon? Well, they can babysit that time, and so on. I left Saturday mornings and Tuesday evenings as my time to babysit. My sister and my mom were very pleased with the arrangement. The other family, not so much. And when someone pointed out that my sister didn't get the baby for a whole day, discussions about my sister being an irresponsible mother started, with my mother trying to defend her. AITA for causing this? How come they were expecting me to be my sister's unpaid nanny, but then they get offended when the same thing is being forced on them? I may be the AH because I caused this and don't regret it one bit. Intia, that was a beautiful way to address that. Everyone always says but family until it comes back on them. Ha ha ha, thank you. I admit I got the inspiration after reading several Reddit posts and comments dealing with similar issues. I was like, what if I did? And while I don't necessarily regret taking that route, there's this little worry of having going too far. As I said, the family is having a big discussion about this. How could you possibly have gone too far? They were the folks who insisted that family needed to step up. So, you're just helping them to step up. I think what you did is inspired. This doesn't change the fact that your sister is a complete age for having a child. She had no interest in actually parenting. And, your mom is also an a-hole for dumping said baby, she promised to help raise on you. Keep practicing boundaries with your mom. Don't let her dump the baby on you when it's her scheduled time. Intia, you aren't a spoiled brat. Your sister is a spoiled brat. She chose to bring a child into this world thinking other people would parent him for her. The only person responsible for this baby is your sister. I blame that on our mom. When my sister told us she was pregnant and that the father will be involved, our mother assured her if she kept the baby, then she would help her whenever she needed, as she's already retired and like I said, was excited to have her first grandchild. If your mom assured her that she would be the one to help her whenever she needs it, why is she turning around and dumping the baby on you instead?